an absolute nightmare. Just a moment ago, the ice was still strong. Then a cracking sound. Suddenly, the ice surface breaks under your feet and you plunge into the icy water. How do you get out alive? An even worse scenario, you drift under the frozen layer of ice. How can you possibly escape? That's what we want to test today. The snow-covered Spitzingsee in Bavaria. This is where we want to carry out our experiment. Stuntman Matthias Schendel is going to break through the ice for us and test what it takes to free himself from this life-threatening situation. We don't know how thick the ice is, what it'll do. I don't have an exact idea either of what will happen to me if I'm in the ice for longer. During our experiments, Matthias wears a dry suit. Without it, he would only have a few minutes to get himself out of the cold water. With the suit, at least half an hour. Still, a daring experiment. To make sure nothing goes wrong, the experts from the German life-saving society DLRG are on hand to help. There are also divers here who can intervene at any time. Life jackets are compulsory for everyone, including our camera team. The DLRG has given clearance. The ice layer should be at least 10 centimeters thick. After checking, it's clear. The ice is so thick that we'll even have to prepare the spot for Matthias to break through. The head of operations has the final word. Everyone who goes on the ice is provided with a safety line and then we can start the whole project. It's minus eight degrees outside. The water temperature is just below freezing. Matthias still has a normal body temperature of just under 37 degrees. But that is about to change abruptly. Matthias' body reacts immediately. Due to the cold shock, Matthias first breathes faster and the body shuts down the blood supply to the extremities. Thanks to the dry suit, however, not quite so quickly. But what is the right thing to do now? Lifeguard Marlon Bus gives Matthias vital tips. Tip number one, very little movement. I've only been in for a short time, but I can already feel the cold creeping through my thick clothes. It's really nasty. My hands are almost numb now. Right then, we have to get you out again quickly. Don't move your feet. Ah, don't move. Don't move, because the feet cool down. The blood cools down, so if you move that through your body now, of course you'll cool down much faster. Ah, I see. I'd have thought the opposite. The basic principle is don't panic and move as little as necessary. Let's move on to tip number two. Take off your jacket. Let's see, you're wearing a relatively thick down jacket. Yes, right. It should be really soaked now, it's pulling you down. So you'll see that you can take it off without much movement. Oh, it's really heavy. Yes, it soaks up water right away. The down jacket has to go. But Matthias should definitely keep the rest of his clothes on, because they have an insulating effect and serve as protection against the cold. Now I really feel a bit lighter and can move more freely. But the jacket seems to weigh a ton. Matthias has to get out quickly now, because in cold water you lose heat 25 times faster than in the air. Therefore, tip number three, the seal technique. This method is especially effective on thick ice. My fingers are really hurting. Try and stretch your arms out onto the ice surface in front of you and slowly crawl your way out. Okay. So, try to get all the way out. Oh God, I've got no feeling in my fingers at all. I can barely use them to hold on. 
Use your feet to push against the back of the hole. If the edge of the ice hole is thick enough, you can use your feet to push yourself out. Done it! Great, the worst's over now. If the hole is too big, a strong leg kick can help catapult you out of the water just like a seal. Lie flat on the ground, spread your weight on the ice surface so that it doesn't break again. Now, you crawl back the way you came. Okay, it's not that easy to crawl back in these soaking wet clothes when you're slowly running out of strength. It's extremely important to crawl to the shore flat on your stomach, because this is the only way to distribute your body weight across the ice surface. However, trying to walk upright off the ice is the worst thing Matthias can do. The point load will cause him to fall through again right away. Oh, it's cold on your face. The dangerous thing about falling into ice-cold water, hypothermia. The body goes through three different phases. The first, the stimulation or defense phase. The body tries to produce additional heat by shivering. The pulse quickens, blood pressure rises, hands and feet ache. The body temperature drops to 34 degrees. This is followed by the exhaustion phase. The temperature drops further to 30 degrees. The muscles stiffen and the person in the water becomes apathetic and sleepy. Breathing and heartbeat slow down. The final stage is the paralysis phase. The person can no longer move and becomes unconscious. Breathing is irregular and the heartbeat slows down further. If the body temperature drops below 27 degrees, this leads to hypothermic circulatory arrest and death. Basically, depending on your physical condition, you only have four to 10 minutes to get out before losing consciousness. If the ice is thick enough, the seal technique helps you to get out of the hole. For thinner layers of ice, the icebreaker method is used. Normally, where you break through, the ice is relatively thin. Right. And then you always look for the shortest way to the shore. The ice is relatively thin there too, so you break that up for as long as you can. With the ice here today, however, Matthias won't get far with that. Being in this icy water, pedaling with your feet to work up the energy to break up the ice here is extremely exhausting. And the distance I'd have to cover now is about 20 meters to the shore. I'd say that even breaking through a very thin layer of ice, that would be very difficult to do. Conclusion, the icebreaker method only makes sense when the ice cover is really thin. Matthias' body temperature has dropped to 35 degrees so he already has mild hypothermia. In order not to take any risks, we stop the experiments. Matthias urgently needs to get warmed up. My fingers are totally numb. It feels like someone's hitting them with a hammer. Matthias' vigorous warming up method, however, is not recommended, as we find out afterwards. One hour later, Preparations for the next test. Now it's time for Matthias to go under the ice. We increase the safety precautions even more. From now on, the divers are not only on standby, they are constantly monitoring Matthias in the water. The next attempt involves Matthias going under the ice, so it's far more dangerous than the previous one. That's why I ask you to pay particular attention now. Matthias, for you too. If you feel something's not right anymore, make sure you get out again immediately. All right. In flowing waters, currents quickly pull those who have fallen in underneath the ice. Is there any way to get out by yourself then? A risky experiment. This one's really getting under my skin. I've got a lot of respect for this now. This black hole looks ominous, the way it goes down there, and I'm about to go down too and get trapped under the ice. It's a weird feeling. 
Despite the hopeless situation under the ice, there is one tip. Always look for the brightest spot. I can't give you many tips. Make sure that you have a bit of light. Well, actually, the ice is relatively thick, so I think it'll be quite dark down there. I hope there'll be some light shining down through the hole so you'll be able to find it again. Because of the cold, Matthias would only be able to hold his breath for a few seconds underwater. So that we have enough time for the experiment, he uses a special mask, which supplies him with oxygen and keeps him in contact with us at the same time. Okay, when I look down, everything's completely brown. But above me, it's nice and bright. I'll feel my way along the ice surface and move a little further away from the hole. Thanks to a dry suit and oxygen, Matthias can stay relatively relaxed. In an emergency, anyone who had gone through the ice would panic and have great difficulty finding their bearings. Well, above me, where the snow's on the ice, it's a bit darker. The hole in the ice is where the light's really coming through. Now I'll just try to move back there again. Okay, now I can see the hole quite well again. So, getting my bearings worked amazingly well. But what if you can't find the hole again? Can you get yourself out by punching, kicking or even using a pocket knife? Matthias tries that out too. I can get through the first layer without any problems, through this slush. But then I notice the difference right away when I hit the ice here. Nothing works at all. It's like concrete. Kicking doesn't help either. Not only is the ice too thick, the water resistance also dampens the force of the impact. Now I'll try to get at the ice with these pliers. I'm going to poke the ice with the sharp end. That seems to work a little bit, but... Knocking out an ice hole big enough for me to fit through would take hours. And of course, you don't have that much time in an emergency. Matthias's attempt shows that you should immediately look for the brightest spot in the ice instead of wasting your strength unnecessarily. Once I'm trapped under the ice, I think my survival chances are very, very slim if I don't manage to get back out of the hole right away. Then that's it, I think. Those who think they're safe once they're finally on land are mistaken. There is another danger. Circumrescue collapse. Therefore, tip number six, don't move. Someone who's fallen through the ice will be covered with a rescue blanket back on land. Then, wait for the rescue service. It's very important not to move around a lot under any circumstances. That's because a lot of movement moves the blood around the body. The blood in the arms and legs is very, very cold. So when we get it moving, it goes to the heart. But the heart doesn't like that and can go into cardiac arrest and despite the successful rescue, the person still dies. To prevent this from happening, call the emergency services immediately and warm the casualty with a blanket or jacket. But never rub a collapsed person warm or give them hot drinks, because they should only be warmed up slowly. Conclusion? If you fall through ice, stay calm. Only then will you have any chance at all of surviving this life-threatening situation.